That's Factory Design Suite, Creating Efficient Factories. Again, my name is Jennifer Zavacki. I'm the Business Development Director here with Synergist Engineering Design Solutions. And joining me today is Bob Baylor, Solution Engineer, with our technical team. Today, you will be in a listen-only mode. So want to make sure we uh, properly can introduce what we're going to go through today. Today, here's our agenda for today's presentation. Our goal today is to help you understand how Autodesk Factory Design Suite 2012 can help you meet your business challenges, learn about the key benefits that the software provides, and to simply see how it works. After brief introduction and overview by me, we'll be turning over the presentation to Bob Baylor for the demonstration. Please notice that there's a questions window over in the GoToMeeting panel on the right side of your screen. As the organizer of today's webcast, I'll be monitoring all those questions and that you have throughout the presentation. So feel free to type in a question as we go along. We're definitely going to have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So make sure you jot down some notes, take some questions down, and feel free to type those in that questions window. So let's start out by talking about the state of the factory layout today and the challenges that it brings. One of the biggest challenges today for manufacturers is a financial one. The National Institute of Standards and Technology reported that in the U.S. alone, $15.8 billion in extra costs is incurred annually in factory layouts. And on top of this, we also know that many of you experience increased pressure to produce more out of your factory. You're being forced to cut costs. You also have to manage new product lines or changes in those lines. You're also meeting product, project deadlines. And keeping the factory and the maintenance drawings accurate and up to date is also important. And I'm sure the list goes on and on. So with all this said, let's dive into the particulars a little bit. For those of you involved in laying out equipment and analyzing the efficiency of your factory floor, does this look familiar? We've had a couple customers already tell us that looks strikingly similar to what they use today. So what we're going to show you today is how you can leverage a large library of factory content, such as conveyors, robots, material handling equipment, and more, all within AutoCAD. You also see how Factory Design Suite will enable you to design more optimized layouts done right in AutoCAD. As you make changes, the software will provide you instant feedback into the financial impact of your decision. You'll get real-time feedback right in AutoCAD instead of calculating by hand or using spreadsheets. Let's take a look at another common drawing. Whether you're designing and laying out your factory, or you're a systems integrator, or maybe you're a manufacturer, you manufacture equipment that goes into a factory, this type of drawing probably looks pretty familiar to you. And I'm sure you'll agree, layout des designs that are created in 2D create several challenges. Problems can be overlooked. And obviously, those problems can turn into costly late changes. 2D is often very difficult to interpret, and it leads to poor communication with stakeholders and suppliers. Either you or your staff are probably spending too much time drawing section views. Nearly 50% of the time could be spent on this. So what if you had the ability to convert a 2D drawing into a 3D layout that looks like this? With Factory Suite, you're able to use factory-specific visualization tools to impress potential clients with interactive layout proposals in 3D rather than 2D drawings that have tons of layers and complexity. And if you think this is expensive or unattainable, unattainable, it's not. Many of our customers tell us that they waste a lot of time doing manual tape measurements, capturing that as-built state of the facility. And we know this process is time consuming, and it's definitely open for errors to occur. Autodesk Factory Design Suite helps you deliver 3D animations and visualizations to improve communication. You'll be able to include models from suppliers, regardless of the CAD format that it's drawn in, and include that in your layout. You can shrink wrap it, stripping them, those models from any of the unwanted details that are within them. Our customers will be able to reduce installation risk by analyzing a digital factory model for clashes and space constraints before they become on-site problems. I particularly have one customer who's told me that this capability alone has prevented a ton of problems for them. The factory suite also supports the use of point cloud data to capture that as-built state of the facility. You'll be able to design layouts in context of a laser scan. 
There's class detection capability between laser scan point cloud and a 3D model that you create. So another new workflow that you can incorporate into your design. So it's no wonder there are challenge in factory scenarios when you consider the complexity of what you're trying to achieve. In fact, factories are a particular challenge because of the multiple systems and different areas of operation that need to be integrated. You have your structural steel, your electrical supply, your materials handling equipment, process equipment. All of it needs to be integrated efficiently. This all needs to take place in a facility where hundreds of people, maybe even more, need to work effectively and through which huge amounts of material flow each day. So we have another Synergist customer, a food manufacturer. They purchased Factory Suite a little over a year ago. They look to the 3D modeling capability as a better way of, to communicate their design intent to the various disciplines within their company and improve their efficiency in the installation and their construction process. The great news is that they're experiencing the benefit that Factory Design Suite brings to, this, bring to the table as advertised. So Factory Design Suite. It's a 2D and it's a 3D factory layout solution purpose-built to help you make better layout decisions by creating a digital prototype of your factory. The suite, which is available in three different editions, which we'll cover a little later on today in the broadcast, or different levels, if you will, includes software such as 3ds Max Design and Showcase for proposals and visualization, AutoCAD Architecture and AutoCAD Mechanical for 2D, Autodesk Inventor for, or Inventor Professional for 3D, Navisworks for engineering review and visualization, as well as Autodesk, data, Autodesk Vault for data management. What enhances this product lineup and makes this suite high value for you is, versus just lumping a bunch of products into a, into a box is the factory design utilities. It gives the user factory-specific work environment that helps designers spend more time innovating rather than drafting. So this was the overview. Um, thanks for, for listening in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change over the presentation to Bob Baylor, our solution engineer, um, who is specializing on the factory suite. And I'm going to change the reins over to him. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Bob Baylor. Uh, I'm the solution engineer here at Synergist, uh, specializing on factory design suite. Uh, what I want to cover over <coughs> for you today is uh, uh, the workflow uh, from a 2D all the way up to a uh, presentation. And what you're looking at now is uh, I, uh, I have a drawing up on AutoCAD architecture here. And as Jen, <coughs> excuse me, uh, spoke about earlier, uh, the factory design suite tools you'll find right here up on the ribbon panel. So one of the first tasks we have today is take a look and we're going to optimize you know, how uh, products move through our, our particular factory uh, by analyzing some of the transportation on here. And what you're seeing here is, is typical what you see on a workflow. You notice it goes from, from storage in to the different cells here. And if you just follow my mouse around here, it's just following the route through with different components within the factory, coming around, coming back, and back into uh, the storage going out. Obviously, you know, we could do some improvements here on, the, on this particular layout. What you see down here in the lower right is the cost and, and transportation cost, and that's travel time times the cost rate. That's all built into the, to the, uh, to the uh, components as we uh, bring them in. And I'll dive into them here in a little bit. This other one is the total cost. Uh, what you're seeing there is transportation cost plus machining cost. And then over here is the time it takes for a certain product to go all the way through this process to its, to its completion, and then the uh, distance it travels throughout the process. So one of the obvious things we can do is, is do uh, move some things around here. So I'm going to just use the standard uh, AutoCAD commands. I'm going to select a, a move. I'm going to move this area. from this position, and I'm just going to put this over, and we'd like to have a new storage area. So I'm going to go ahead and plop that over there. And you see not too much has changed here. Uh, the next thing I'll move around is the uh, this particular machining center. And then as I move this, you'll notice the updates on the bottom right there, how that's all been updated. Let's bring that back.
There we go. So you see all that information got updated there for you. Looking at the uh, different uh, objects, as, as you see, the path is going, you know, in, in a fashion there, and this is all uh, showed up. You see we have these different operations built in here. And these are, you know, things you guys are already familiar with. You have different operations in this particular plant. The next obvious thing we can do is uh, to maybe optimize the way this moves through the factory. So the next thing we can take a look at down here is actually how it goes from one operation to the next. In this case, we're going to take the human factor out, and we're going to go ahead and add some conveyors here. And all we're doing is just changing the process. We're not actually physically placing the conveyor in here. What we're doing at this point is just doing some one-if scenarios and some analysis here. So we'll go down here to the valve seat machining, and we'll go ahead and change that to a fork truck. And you notice this went up a little bit because we're already using power on that fork truck. So going down through the rest of these, we'll go ahead and make this a uh, conveyor. Uh, valve seat machining, we'll go ahead and make that conveyor. And notice as we go along, this is, this is updating. The cleaning station, have a conveyor there. And then for the coating station, we'll go ahead and put a fork truck there. And the remaining here, we'll go ahead and put the conveyors there for you. So now if you take a look at this, if we take a look at the time, and we look at the flow here, we're starting to get to where, where our goal was. Now, the initial goal was, and the uh, plant manager has come in and looked at this, and thought, you know what, I'd like to get change my part quantity per hour from 150 to 300. So I'm going to go ahead and update that to 300. And you'll notice, as you expected, these values went up. You know, we're, we're getting more to, to our factory now. What can we do to optimize this machine? And let's take a look at some things we can do to optimize this. So we'll come over here to our uh, machining analysis. And what this is doing, this is going to analyze, and we're going to uh, optimize these, these equipment on here. So what you see is the red, the one and two, or, or things that are being overutilized. And what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and, and select that, and we're going to put an optimization. We're going to add the meter right to this uh, for a panel here. And you notice this particular one is being overutilized. And same thing down here with one. So those two units are being way overutilized. So what can we do here? What can we do to help with the utilization there? Well, in this particular operation, we could probably add another CNC machine or some more equipment to, to lower our processing time. So we'll go ahead and see what would happen if we did change that from a 6 to a 3. Now that turns green. That is no longer being overutilized. Then down to 1, which would be the assemble area, we'll go ahead and change that processing time. Maybe we'll put some automation in here. Maybe we'll put a robot in here, do some automation here. So we'll take that processing time from 8 to 4. You can see now our workflow has been optimized. And if you look over here at transportation, you'll notice we have time for breaks. So at this point, you know, we went through and took a look at the different operations. Uh, what you see on each operation, and these are, you know, what you guys probably have spreadsheets for, you know, transportation type, travel speed per minute, cost rate, load time, all this stuff is, is our user input for, for your particular factory. Once we have this done, one of the nice things with analysis here is you can print this out for a report. So we're going to go ahead and generate a, a report of what we've done here on this uh, optimization. So we'll select generate report, and what we'll do, it'll uh, come out with a, um, in a spreadsheet. And I'll just put this in my desktop so we can pull it up and show you that. So here's the report itself. And on the front page, these are the optimization results. And so what you can see are the number of jobs that we're running through our plant and a chart on the machine utilization based on the changes we made in AutoCAD. Then over here on details, we can go through on, on every particular operation. We can break it down by an identifier that you guys may use, set up cost rate, processing cost rate, and you can read across the line there. All this information, a lot of you folks probably have on different spreadsheets or throughout your, your area to, to figure out you know, how a particular operation is being utilized, you know, what its costs are. So nice, nice feature for that. So I'll go ahead and close that out. So we're going to make the assumption that uh, we've got approval. And some of the things we're, we're, we're thinking about doing is, is automate this operation. 
put a new storage area over here and put another some more CNC put it in this area. So I'm going to flip over to our next drawing where, like a good TV chef, I've got that set up for us already. <clears throat> I'm going to come over here to the, um, uh, and these are just basic auto command, CAD commands here. So where we would start out is this is where we initially started out, this particular layer. I'm just changing the layer states here. Down here, and our idea is to remove these machines. We want to remove this cell, this operation, and this operation. And we want to replace them with a new CNC machining center, a new head assembly area, and a new storage area. And, and that's the goal here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see how we would do this in just a regular AutoCAD. What you find over within the uh, factory design suite is uh, what we call an asset browser. And in this asset browser, we'll come through this is out of the box for different assets that we can bring into our plan. And I'll go through a couple here. The general just shows uh, you know, people here. Uh, we can go over to material handling, and all these uh, you can take advantage of and use these models here. You're not in the business of designing racks. You're in the business to you know to run your factory. So you know you may have some of your own components, or you may have some that you would just use out of stock here. So in this particular case, I'm just going to grab the rack here. I'm just going to left click and bring that over into my drawing. I'm just going to place it just like you would do in AutoCAD, and I'll do a zero angle. And I could use standard AutoCAD command for copy, or I can just bring more over. So I'll just put another one over there and place that. And we'll place one more. And zero angle. There. So we brought those three ones, and this is just right out of our inventory here. Uh, if we go up, there's some other things we can do. Uh, there are some user assets. So you may have some of your own models or that you brought in for your vendors or suppliers. We can bring them in as well. Uh, in this case, I'm going to bring in a model that I received from one of my suppliers for this multi-machine CNC. And we'll just take this, and we'll bring that right in here. And we'll click that to accept that. Now, I understand most of you may not have these models. Uh, later on in the demonstration, I'm going to uh, walk into the process and how you can receive these models in from your vendors and suppliers and convert them into your own assets for your, your factory. So at this point, uh, I'm going to say we're complete, except this area here. And I'm going to be doing that in the next section when we go into Inventor and talk about how we can start to visualize a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file. And then over my factory tab, I'm going to take this and I'm going to send it to Inventor. And this is only a factory design tab there. So I'm going to send this over to Inventor. And what it's doing, it's uh, opening up Inventor. And it's bringing that across, and it's placing that in the, uh, the invent inventor environment. We'll let that thing load up. The nice thing with the factory design suite, you don't have to truly understand some of the 3D uh, uh, modeling techniques as far as how things get uh, put together. What you'll notice on here is uh, the idea of what we call the floor. And as we create assets, and as we bring assets in, they all automatically snap down to this floor. So you don't have to worry about you know the standard mate relationships. Those kind of you know kind of assembly relationships you'll find if you are knowledgeable with 3D software. Uh, in this case, we're just you know we're going to assume that we don't have no 3D knowledge, and we're just going to start bringing in some assets. So the first thing you notice, you see that these are the three racks that I placed in over in AutoCAD, and this is that new machine center. And over here is what we call a model browser. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to replace all those 2D assets. And if you remember, they were 3D when I brought them in 2D. We just had 2D representation of that. So I'm going to go ahead and auto place those 3D assets in there. And if you look on the screen there, you'll see it's, it's placing those assets. It's recognizing what's in the model and replacing the 2D view with the 3D assets. And when I first saw this, I, I was surprised how easy this was to bring across. So I was pretty impressed with what they're doing, what they did with this. So as you can see, it's starting to populate uh, the, the 2D portion of that. And I'm not doing any assembly constraints here. I'm just, just bringing this in from the 2D. And it's just chugging along and placing uh, those 3D assets. Once this is all placed, my next step then will be to go ahead and place some assets I have locally. And then we're going to talk about how we can uh, create assets uh, from files out from outside of our organization. And the example I'm going to use is a thick robot. 
and we're going to take that in FXEXECTIA file, and uh, we're going to take that, convert that into Inventor, and create an asset for that pretty pretty fast. So let's take a look at what we have here. This is the uh, the Inventor uh, interface, and I'm on this factory tab. So a couple things we can do. Uh, and over here is what you saw in AutoCAD was the same thing. You still have you know, your different assets and those type of things. We'll be coming back to that in Lance and conveyors here in a little bit. So first thing I like to do is insert uh, a particular model. So I'm going to select insert and I'm going to go into uh, some inventor data I have. I've already got one that's created. Uh, this is an example where in, if you're familiar with Inventor, you'll notice this is an individual part file. Uh, with assemblies, you, you know, the best way to bring this in there is either do a shrink wrap or do a derived part and create, take that assembly and just create an individual part. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and select open. And what you'll notice is it'll come in at the end of my cursor here. You notice how it tried to sit on the floor here, and I'll zoom in so we can see a little bit. And I'm just going to place the asset right there on the floor and hit check mark. And it landed right on the floor, right where it was supposed to. And all they did was just visually place that in there for me. So no assembly relationships, no constraints I had to worry about. So I'm going to rotate this around. I realize on a webinar this may not come through as quick. So I'm going to kind of zoom in here so you can see what's going on here. So here we have the star of our layout here. And what I'd like to do is go in and uh, I'd like to uh, create an asset. So how do I create an asset? So go up here and create an asset. And I'm going to import this asset. And this is where uh, an example where I had some CATIA files here. So let's change this to all files. And what you'll see here, this is a CATIA file. And we're going to create an asset from that. So we're going to go ahead and select open. And what Inventor is doing, it's bringing this in, uh, creating, uh, bringing in all the solids and all the information from that model. And then we'll end up saving it as an Inventor model here. Depending on the size of the model, uh, and obviously depending on what you have open on your system, you know, that, that time could vary. So once, once I bring that up, my next couple steps then will be to define what that, uh, what that part is. I'm going to define a landing surface and if I want any connection points. And connection points you'll see when I start bringing in some conveyors and how they kind of put together like Legos. So here's this robot. This is the one that we brought in that was from Katia. Uh, you know, we're not robot manufacturers, but we use robots in our plant. So once I they were bring this in, it brought this in, and I'm not going to select the asset builder. And those we went in, and I went ahead uh, by default in this particular part. It grabbed the bottom as a landing surface. So we're all, we're okay with landing surface. But if if that didn't come up, you would just select landing surface and select that plane that stays with the bottom. Of this model here. Next thing we need to do is, is publish this asset. So let's go ahead and save it. And then here's where we uh, start to publish our, op, our, uh, our asset. I'm going to go ahead and put it in, in my library. <coughs> Excuse me. And over here I'll go ahead and put my name as the author. And for category, we're going to give it a robust category, and we'll talk about some of the search capabilities here within the interface, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a category of robots. And for keywords, I'll go ahead and select uh, six axis, and maybe we'll throw in another keyword of robots. Okay. What it's going to do is, once I create this asset, and this goes back to how does it know from 2D to 3D, if you come over to this button here, what it's going to do is automatically at the same time going to publish a 2D representation of this from the top down. It knows this is the laying service, so it's going to get a, a planned view of that. This is how we're able to bring in, when I was in AutoCAD, I was able to bring in that multi-machine uh, machining center. That's why it came in in 2D. And when they published that, this is how they did that. So there's not, nothing magical there. So we'll go ahead and take that and we'll go ahead and say OK to create that and then we'll come up here and we'll finish the asset folder. While that thing's chugging along, well, let's do its thing here. 
I'm going to switch back over to the assembly as soon as uh, it does its publishing. What it's doing is evaluating the file. Publishing the file is, is uh, an adventure part uh, or as an asset in your factory. At the same time, it's creating that 2D view for us and placing that in our asset library when we get back into assembly. So she's working away here. So it, And as Jen said, if, we, if you have any questions as we're going along, just go ahead and type that in there. She's monitoring that. And then uh, we'll come back to them at the, at the end of the presentation. We'll come back and we'll take a look at those questions and try to answer questions as we go. So it's plugging along. There it goes. I apologize. I got currently a bunch of things open here. So we get the opportunity and I'll select uh, Finish Asset Builder. Keep in mind the work it's doing. It's you know actually creating that asset for us. And, doing those representations we need there. So there we go. Just about done here. So we're going to flip over to the assembly here. So I've already done that with, with my assets over here. But I just wanted it was important that I went through and sh to show you that. Sorry for the time it took to do that. So down here under system assets, uh, we have quite a few. Uh, like I said earlier, I already created that asset here, so I have it placed in there. So I'm going to go ahead and take that, and I'm going to place that into my uh, into my factory. And and just like any other model, we're just going to place it right on the floor and hit OK. So as far as creating assets, it, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just going there, uh, creating the asset, and selecting what type of model you want to use for that asset and selecting your keywords and deciding where you want to place that. Next thing I want to talk about is some of the system assets that we have in here. Uh, same thing that you saw in AutoCAD. Uh, different, for example, architectural with furniture is available. Um, structural, so all your structural corners, booths, catwalks, everything you think you might need in a factory. A lot of that stuff is put right in the system. I want to focus in on the, uh, the conveyor. And what I'd like to do is put some uh, conveyor systems in here to, to move some of, as part of my factory design here. So I'm going to come down here to the roller conveyor, and I'm going to use this straight roller conveyor. I'm just, like I said, click and drag that, and I'm going to place that. And here you're going to start to see the idea of what we call connectors. So I'm going to place them right here and have a zero degree rotation. Oops. Let's try that again. Bring that over. I rotated the wrong way earlier. Done. And we'll take, uh, let's do the horizontal curve, and we'll bring that across. And you'll see the connector here. As I get near that, it automatically snaps there like a Lego and puts that together. Then we'll take this straight roller conveyor and we'll bring that over and same idea with that. And I'll go ahead and put another one there on the edge. So that's not and from the inventor, what you're seeing over here on the right is what we call our model browser. So this is just giving a list of all the things we have in our particular model. What, what I have set up over here are your different panels here. And each one, I can go in and select that. And you'll notice there's, uh, there's parameters here that we can change in this particular model. So this is the particular change here. And I'd like to make that a little bit longer. So I'm going to change that from a 2 to a 4,000, just like that. And it automatically updates the 4,000. And it'll add two other legs onto that. So we bring that out. So that was the steps. This is the, the portion when, when you're in the inventor environment. So just to kind of recap what we did, we brought in, we, we went from uh, from our AutoCAD layout, we took that, this is the machining center that came in, and these are the racks that you saw over here that we placed over here. And now we need to update our drawing. So what we have here is a basic layout 
the next step in the process then, of course, we'll go ahead and select Update. And while that's updating it, let's go ahead and save that, and we'll call it Bob's Factory. And save. And then we'll let it do, it, do its thing here. So what it's, what it's going to do is going to go out, it's going to update the drawing, and after we take a look at the Navis works, we'll go back and we'll look at that updated drawing, and you'll see that update then, rather than having you sit there and wait for that. So next step in the process then is now that you've got your design completed, now you need to visualize it. Now you want to figure it to your stakeholder and say, you know, what's this going to look like in my factory? So if you're a supplier or someone that sells equipment into, into a bigger company, you know, what's your equipment going to look like in their factory? So we start off by uh, using Navisworks to bring us in. And Navisworks is designed to bring in different CAD data from your different uh, trades. So we're going to go ahead and append. And the first thing we'll do is we're going to bring in uh, the production. This is what we were uh, working on earlier. So we'll bring those layouts in. Next thing we'll do is we'll pen that with uh, the actual building. And this could be from your architect, or it could be an AutoCAD drawing, or it could come from AutoCAD architecture. This is the actual physical building itself. So we'll pen that file with that. And what's doing is going in, getting that drawing, bring it in here, and bring it into our environment. So there's our actual building itself. Next thing we'll do is we'll go in here and we'll append uh, some piping to this. So that we'll put the floor in next. So we'll do the foundation. And then last but not least, we'll append this. Can you imagine doing this on, on, with different uh, drawings? So we go in and we append that with that. Viewpoint. So we have uh, some uh, save viewpoints. Let's go over here and take a look at some different areas here. So let's start uh, at the start view. And first thing we can do now that we have this, let's go in there and let's do a, uh, a fly through of this. So I'm going to change my viewpoint to a, to a third person. And this can be found over here on these save viewports here. I'm just going to pin that to there. And then we can actually take a walk through our factory. So I'm just going to go in and uh, walk in through my plan. And this is bringing in all these different uh, CAD files. So we've got uh, the floor, the foundation drawing, the building from the architect, uh, the piping for your AutoCAD MEP, <coughs> excuse me, uh, some of the components both from AutoCAD and Inventor. So we can just walk in through there and rotate that around. So we'll walk them up to the plan a little bit. And he can spin around and take a look at things there. So you can do quick fly-throughs like this and actually envision what your factory looks like. Next thing you want to take a look at is this cylinder storage area. What else can we do with this information now that it's in Navisworks? Well, we can go in here and we can do some review here. Uh, one thing we can do is do the measuring. So we can take the measure and we can take a look at those racks and we can measure it from the end of the rack to the end of the walkway. We see two meters. So with the measure tool, you can measure point to point, multiple points, angles, areas, whatever you need to do to measure in your facility. Uh, the other thing we can do is add some tags to this. And we'll go ahead and put a tag to this. And this is just a note here to say remove rack. And hit OK. This get all gets saved in this file. And at any time, you can always go back and take a look at any comments. So, you know, different people with different stakeholders are reviewing your, your design and checking things. You know, they can be adding comments there. This will really help with collaboration and getting information back and forth there for you. Next thing we'll talk about is a little bit about flash detection and how that's working, which I think is one of the most exciting parts of how the software works. If we come over to the class detection, what my goal is, you notice we brought in, you know, the, the building and the piping. They're all different drawings. 
you know, how do we sit down and figure out if there's any plastic infection? And this is a tool uh, you need to do that. Navisworks has been quite a while. It's been out there for a while in the building industry. So this is something kind of new within manufacturing. So those of you who are not familiar with that, uh, this is uh, a real big tool for that. So what we're going to do, we're going to go over and we're going to start the, the class detection. And the way this uh, class detector works is you define what you want to compare with. In this case, I want to compare this machining operation with the piping to see if there's any uh, detection. And we'll go ahead and start that. And we come over to results, and you can see we've got quite a few clashes here. And just by working your way down through there, it highlights where they're at in the factory, and it kind of visually tells you where that particular clash is happening. Pretty important stuff. This is kind of stuff you don't realize until you're starting to build your plant and start to put in your facility. This is very expensive at the back end to go in there and change that pipe. Maybe put an elbow or lower the height or whatever it needs to happen so you can see where it's, it's clashing there. So the clash detection, in, in my opinion, is pretty powerful here with this and a big reason why people are looking at, uh, at this particular suite. <coughs> Next thing I want to show you is a little bit about uh, 4D and how we can simulate the construction of a particular plant. And in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and open up another file here. And we'll bring up um, and we need to save that. So the same same plan. Uh, I just have some different uh, uh, viewports selected here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set this viewport, and I'm going to run the 4D here and show you what, what's going on here. So the way the timeline works, if you're familiar with the uh, with Gantt charts. And what you'll see here, these are all the different tasks in, in, the, in the production of, of building my plant. Or moving things out, swapping machines out, whatever you know your task in hand is. And you'll see I can go in there and like any Gantt chant, I go in and change the, these are all different tasks throughout there. What I like to do is simulate that. So I'll go ahead and <coughs> excuse me, hit the simulate tab. And then I'm going to go ahead and select play and you're going to see the uh, the plant uh, go through its different stages, and which you'll notice, and I'll pause this here in a second. As it's going through its different stages, it's selecting, and we'll go ahead and pause this. What you're seeing is, at, at this particular step, it's actually automating and showing you what it's going to look like as this equipment is being brought in. So here we're looking at Thursday at 2.40 a.m., day 18, week 3. So I'll go ahead and finish that. <laughs> Excuse me. So there's the 4D. So uh, with that, Jen and Mike, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you quick while I can still talk here. <coughs> all right, I got it here, Bob. Sorry. Yeah, right there. My goodness. <laughs> get, a, get a drink of water. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much, Bob. It was great. Um, so just to wrap things up here, folks, um, you know, really what we, what we talked about today and what Bob had showed you is really a way to help you design and visually communicate your layout ideas of your factory. You know, what he, what he took you through were really three easy steps. You know, he created 2D conceptual layout in AutoCAD, or he imported, you know, you can also import um, existing 2D drawings. It gave you the ability to drag and drop machines and other facility equipment directly onto that 2D layout, and then communicated the layout ideas and create installation drawings automatically um, and be able to perform engineering reviews with the team. So what I wanted to take you through is, is really how the factory suite is packaged. You know, each edition of the factory design suite builds upon the value of the previous one with additional functionality and, and specialized workflows. So if you take it here from left to right, um, starting with the standard edition, this is for the layout designers, drafters, detailers, people who need a foundation set of tools to efficiently design and document and share drawings in a DWG file format. That's that first part of the, of the process that Bob had taken you through. 
The second edition, or the, the middle edition of the product or the factory design suite is called the premium edition. And that builds upon everything you get in the standard. And it adds capabilities for manufacturers, system integrators, equipment builders who need more of an optimized set of tools in a 3D visual layout and visualization. This, this part of the suite includes Inventor, and that's what helps you build those, those factory models. Also brings into the fold 3ds Max Design and Navisworks Simulate for visualization purposes. And finally, there's the Ultimate Edition. That builds upon the value of both the standard and the premium. And it adds capabilities that are ideally suited for machine builders and system integrators, the people that need more advanced tools to design and visualize, and simulate the factory and its equipment. So the, in terms of the additions and, and the different levels of the suite, that's where the folks here at Synergist that we can help you determine which edition is the best fit for your particular needs. So in terms of factory, in a nutshell, you know, the, the product is scalable. You can start small. You can start at 3D and build your capabilities and, your, and get optimized and, and be more savvy with the tool as your needs progress and move into the 3D and the visualization. So the great news is, is that you can start small and go big. Um, it's also cost effective. So a lot of people see this functionality and they've told us, my goodness, that looks like a really expensive package. Well, the great news is, is that to, ent to enter into, say, the standard version of the factory design suite, it's really not that much more than AutoCAD. So, and if you have an Autodesk asset, such as AutoCAD today, or say you have Inventor today, or if you have AutoCAD architecture, know that you can use those products to go ahead and upgrade and move into the factory suite um, for an up upgrade cost. So if you're thinking that the product is you know, fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars like other types of factory layout and simulation software is, it's absolutely not the case. So I, I encourage you to give us a call if you want to understand what the pricing looks like or how you can move into the suite. We're happy to help you understand um, things from a price perspective. And finally, the suite is attainable. You know, it's not high end. It runs on AutoCAD. It uses Inventor. This product is not supposed to be a PhD level product. It's for mainstream designers and drafters and engineers to be able to lay out a factory. Um, and as you'll notice down here, you know, Autodesk, you know, we, Synergist is an Autodesk, um, Autodesk training center. We're an authorized gold partner. And just recently, we have been honored by um, the two designations. One, that we're, a special, we're specialized in both consulting and factory. So we're one of the very first factory specialized resellers in the country. So um, we've been chosen by Autodesk as, as a leader in this um, particular industry. So we look forward to working with everybody um, from a factory perspective as well. So finally, the, in terms of getting up and running. So you might think, well, there's a ton of software in this factory suite. How the heck am I going to learn it all? Well, the good news is you don't have to learn every single bell and whistle of each one of the products in the suite, you know, of course, unless you want to. But we actually are just rolling out now a factory, pro a factory training class. So, you know, again, we are one of the very first fa factory specialized re gold partners in the country, and we're introducing a four-day class exclusively focused on factory design. What it is, it's an introduction to the basics of each application in the factory design suite. And what we do is we take you through the best practices with the architectural elements, the manufacturing assets, basically all of the things that you saw today in the demonstration, we're going to help you get up to speed from a, um, using the suite and the utilities within the suite effectively to get you up and running. So with that, that pretty much concludes our session today. So we can go ahead and hang on the line here should anybody have any questions. Um, the one question I did see as we um, came up here um, during the uh, presentation, there was a question regarding hardware configurations and system requirements. So Bob, would you happen to um, you know, want to comment on that for, for folks in terms of you know, what they need to consider as they purchase hardware? Or if they have hardware today, what do they need to, to think about? Uh, can, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, you know, I don't know if I was muted or not. Uh, I, I can, well, I don't have that here right on my fingertips, but if you're, 
if you just go out the Autodesk website and you go in the factory design suite, it'll, it'll give you a list of the uh, hardware requirements. I don't have them right here at my fingertip, though. Okay. So it's, it, we could always email that out to people if you have a yeah. particular question. Okay. Yeah. So um, I don't see any other questions in the window unless um, we want to, we can unmute or you can raise your hand um, through the chat here and, um, you know, or, or type in your question. Jen, I'm going to flip over to me as a presenter real quick, if you don't mind. Okay. And then one thing I failed to show everybody was what the uh, that drawing looked like. So this was this was the drawing after we were done with the vendor. So once I started coughing, I, and I apologize for that, I, I just wanted to show you a bit update in the uh, in that drawing there. So I'll go ahead and bring it back to you, Jen. Okay. Okay, we have a question here. Why not Revit? So why not use Revit? I would I would I would guess is the question here. Um, I got from someone here. The you know as far as you know, and I I had a customer today or not too long ago ask me about that. You know, they actually called and said, hey, you know, could you go ahead and um, you know quote me a seat of Revit? And in understanding what um, you know what you, you are looking to accomplish in terms of the design of your factory. Um, this, is fa this is specific to more of the, um, the factory layout, whereas Revit is more from a building perspective and, and, and modeling using BIM. Um, so depending on what, you're, what the kind of data you're getting from your supplier, your vendors that might be designing your factory if you're doing it yourself, um, it really, I guess, is going to be personal preference of what you want to do in terms of the design. You know, this is very specific to the equipment and the machinery and the flow of your factory versus more of the architectural elements of your factory. Um, I can go ahead and put you on, I can unmute you, I think it's Scott here, if you have, hold on, let me find you here, I'll get you off unmute. Scott, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, um, did I answer your question or do you have any further questions about, about Revit? No, I understand. Um, my question was Revit and maybe okay. uh, compared to the components of the inventor level. A lot of piping and semiconductor work is done for, I guess we're using uh, AutoCAD MEP, Revit MEP, and then for the parts we're using inventor. But uh, this is interesting uh, technology. Great, yeah, and you, you'd probably want to still stick with MEP for the, those uh, three, you know, those couple different disciplines for the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, HVAC of your um, facilities because mm -hmm. it does not have MEP in it. It has the AutoCAD architecture in it, um, but you, what's nice is that it's, because it's still DWG and you have that Navisworks component, you'll be able to, you know, probably inter, intermix those files and, and leverage the data wherever it's created. Yeah, that MEP is very valuable. You, you want to hold on to that for sure. Okay. It was my understanding that uh, Autodesk is going to stop supporting AutoCAD MEP in the future. Is that true? Not to our knowledge, no. Hmm. Okay. I don't have any other questions. Okay. Thanks for asking, though, Scott. Okay, just looking for any other questions here. Um, we have a question, when will the factory course be available, schedule, and cost? Um, I believe the, um, the schedule will be posted. We um, will probably be coming out with that, co that class in January. We'll see that first one scheduled. Um, the cost of that um, is, I believe it's $12.95 per person. And there's another question here. What is the preferred 3D model file format to ask from our equipment suppliers? The nice thing, excuse me, the nice thing about factory design suite, it really doesn't matter to us as far as the software is concerned. So that's less work on your suppliers and less work on yourself. So, you know, it could be a step file, a SDL file, you know, their native file, you know, depending on what they use. Yeah, so really, I mean, if it's an inventor, that's fantastic. If it's SOLIDWORKS, yeah. we can pull in a SOLIDWORKS file. If it's pro-engineer, we can pull that in. If it's a step yeah. file, you can pull it in. 
Yep. So, you know, we know that we've heard from our customers that, that it's a lot of times very challenging to get a 3D model from a vendor just because they feel like, you know, the intellectual property or the maybe the, um, the inside guts of the machine, you might take it and shop it. Um, but if there's a way that they can strip out all that detail or, you know, we can help you understand, like, how to instruct them how to strip that out um, so that you can leverage those 3D models, that's definitely um, something you want to try to go after is to, to get a 3D model from your vendors. So I also had another question here, um, is, is there a specific factory application or is the factory suite the bundle of applications, AutoCAD, Inventor, Navisworks? So the answer to that question is absolutely a bundle of applications, but riding over top of all that inside of each application is a, the factory design utility. That utility is found as a pull down in the different applications in the suite, which you wouldn't get should you buy, say, AutoCAD Architecture or Navisworks or Inventor by itself. So there is absolutely factory specific pull downs and tool sets inside of the suite that makes it unique. Yeah, I have an image here that maybe that might be interesting. It's with the products included on all three different versions. Sure, that'd be great. That, yeah, let me pull that up here. Okay, so this is uh, factory design suite and, and what's included in each one. So you think it's what he was, he was asking? Yeah, let me, uh, that was Perry, I'm going to, Perry, I'm going to unmute you here and see if you, Perry, did we answer your question? I unmuted you. I guess we're not hearing from Perry. No, it's okay. yeah, I don't see. It. So for you other folks that are on the call here, just just so you can see, uh, this, this between the standard, premium, and ultimate, they, they they build from each other. Meaning, you know, at the base of the standard, you get the AutoCAD architecture, mechanical, vault, showcase, and the design suite utilities. As you bump up into the premium. You get all of those plus what you see down here. So you get Venture with Premium, 3ds Max, Navisworks, Simulate, <coughs> excuse me, and then the Ultimate. You have the additional the Adventure Professional, which gives you FEA capabilities, uh, tubing pipe, and that type of stuff, and Navisworks Manage. What you saw today, I was running from the Ultimate. Okay, uh, Perry, are you there? No. Okay. I'm not sure if I am or not, am I? There you are. Okay. Yeah. Did we answer the question? Uh, actually, yes, your answer was very good because I, uh, I just didn't know if it was, you got all these different applications, but what you made it very clear was there was something overriding such that uh, it tied them together and added additional utilities to each one of them. So, uh, that, that, yeah. uh, that, that's really the workflow that it enables. Yeah, it's yeah. that utility that makes it flow from one application to the other, absolutely. Right. I didn't realize I did have a mic. It's on a. It was turned up on the headset. <laughs> no problem. Thanks for asking your question, though. Sure. Okay. So, Bob, I think that's it. I, that's, that's all the questions that I see. Um, so, you know, to 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 um, wrap it up, feel free to um, give us a call or send over an email to Synergis. Um, any of us will do, and we'll make sure we get um, in, back in touch with you. Um, if you have any questions at all or any follow-up that, that's needed on our part, certainly reach out. We're happy to, um, to answer any questions that we have. And hopefully uh, today was a great time spent learning about Factory Design Suite. And I thank you all for, for attending today. You still there, Jen? <laughs>